what is up what is up what is up everybody doing a quick little um what is this quick quick thoughts quick quick uh quick and instant reactions i don't know whatever i'm gonna call it uh something we want to do just to kind of get something quick out for the people we're gonna talk about this ravens titans another frustrating one uh for a ravens fan like me and a lot of us out here um game that felt like it it was almost over in a way you know, it felt like we were not that I think we call any game over before it's over, but you know, it felt like we were in firm control, especially those first, uh, well, the first quarter we didn't have the lead, and then we kind of got going. The second quarter, the third quarter was better, uh, and then we just got out manned and out muscled in the, in the, in the fourth, uh, with Derrick Henry finally getting it going. Um, which I mean, I think everybody expects, uh, but you know, lack of tackling, lack of di- lack of discipline. Lack of execution uh, is just to name a few um, things, <clears throat> but I mean, Ravens lose this game. What was the score again? Thirty to twenty-four. If I'm not mistaken, thirty to twenty-four in overtime. Derrick Henry was like not a walk-off uh, rushing touchdown, but you might as well call it a walk-off rushing touchdown at this point, um, where he just kind of broke away to hit the little play-action pass. They always tend to hit Ravens are undisciplined on defense again, and there you go. Um, one of the biggest things, you know, speaking of the defense while we're on that subject, one of the biggest things I saw in this game was the defense not being disciplined, uh, you know, and, and that's a that's a huge deal. It's a bigger deal than I think it even looks like. And, and you know, of course, you know, there is no Calais. There's no Brandon Williams, so that hurts you up, up front. But, you know, first three quarters, they play well. They play discipline. They play sound, you know. And, I mean, I think they struggled all day, you know, way with the, with the passing game. Uh, just simply because, you know, you you got to commit one way or the other. You know, it's kind of hard. I think it, I think it's very difficult to say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, let my corners play back, and then I'm gonna, you know, let my defensive line and linebackers do that thing. That's kind of a difficult thing to do. It's a little harder than it seems, I think. But uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things. You know, it's one of those things where this this has been that type of season. You know, where like. It's been a season where we've seen the Ravens not finish, and that's in a variety of different ways. One of the interesting things while we're still on the defense that I've noticed uh, with the Ravens is that the defense cannot finish in the big moments, right? The defense is great. They're a great defense, uh, you know, probably top five in the league, I think we could say, maybe even top three. But when it comes in terms of finishing the game, when you need them the most, you know, the big game type deal, They do not finish. And you look at a lot of the losses that, you know, pretty much all the losses that Lamar has had to endure. And and that's what eight now, I think it is. I think it's eight losses in in his uh, two and a half year. Right. This is the second season starting. So, I mean, it's been been pretty much two full seasons, I think, by now. But uh, in those losses, including the playoffs, of course, um, it's not like. Baltimore hasn't been in those games. Like everybody would be like, oh, they play terrible, blah, blah, blah. Even when they started off terrible, they'll find their way and then they'll get it down to seven. Look at the Chiefs game. That's another example from earlier this year where they got it down to seven and then the defense folded and then, you know, they couldn't get the ball back one more time. Um, you know, same thing we saw. We saw it with the Browns last year. We saw it with the Chiefs last year. We saw it with the Chiefs this year. Even you could even say the Titans last year, um, and I think even the even the Chargers the year before, if I'm not mistaken, it was the same. It's the same narrative, and that's what sucks. And and it's weird because now the narrative is starting to change, right? Because on one hand, before it was like if they don't run the ball enough, you know, and add in some turnovers here and there too, they don't, you know, they lose the game. But look at these last couple of games, especially the last couple of losses. You look at the Patriots, right? You look at the Patriots. Uh, there were some turnovers that were costly, but they ran the ball, you know, they ran the ball at least stuck with it. You know, they ran the ball relatively effectively. Same thing in this game. They ran the ball well. JK was a beast today, but at the same time, they couldn't, you know, they just couldn't finish the drives. You know, what I'm noticing too is with Baltimore, it just seems like, you know, now they're running enough like, like that, you know, that's no longer the issue. They're still running, you know, 30 plus times or whatever it needs to be. But it seems like for some reason, they just can't 
finish those drives. You know, there's a costly turnover here or the defense. And I think it could, I think it goes back to the defense, right? You know, we always draft for defense. We sign for defense, bringing in Ngakwe, bringing in Calais, you know, bringing in Derek Wolf, you know, re-signing Marlon Humphrey, bringing in Patrick Queen in the, you know, Queen in the draft, uh, who was it, Jalen Ferguson, uh, too, you know, and those guys, even bringing in Earl in years past. But it seems like for some reason it's the defense that does not finish the games, right? You know, it seems like, yes, they're, they're, you know, even in this one, you could say the throw to Duvernay was a costly turnover. I would say that too. You know, I would say that was a costly turnover, but at the same time, you know, it felt like Duvernay almost lost it. I would say lost it in the sun. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how much the sun was shining today, but, you know, it felt like he lost it in the air and couldn't find it. So even with that, the defense still got to step up and make, you know, play the same way you've been playing, you know, and uh, I don't know, man, you know, it's, it's frustrating. Another frustrating loss for the Ravens. Wanted to give my quick thoughts on this. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be, maybe 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Might be a little longer if I go on a tangent or something. But, you know, uh, you know, defensively, I think I think now it seems like the issue is the defense. Like on one hand, yes, it, I think it's the defense in the clutch moments, not necessarily always the offense. Yes, the offense can be an issue. But I mean, even today, it felt like the offense played pretty well with the exception of some drops. I know Mark dropped one or two balls today. Hollywood dropped a couple of balls today. Um, Dez. It didn't look like a drop. I would have to really go back and look at that that first catch he got. It was like on the first drive. What was on third down? He made. He it looked like he made the catch, and they said he didn't make the catch, and it was a some sort of offensive penalty that they declined and gave him the ball back. So I was like, what? Like that didn't even look like a drop to me. That was. I was like, what happened? Like that was crazy. But but yeah, like I don't know, man. I I, I feel like uh. I feel like right now, you know, it comes back to the defense because even last week, last week offensively, the team didn't play terribly, right? There was one bad pick, I think, you know, two bad throws by Lamar all game, and then one, you know, and that one bad pick included in that, you know, with the um the throw to Hollywood trying to be aggressive. But other than that, like, and that's kind of where the picks, I guess, are happening to them deep balls. But other than that, like, that was it. You know, that that's that's the only only throw there was, you know. Is that uh, you know that's that's the only real bad throw there was I felt like from last week and then this week I didn't feel like you know it was a bad game from the offense this week either you know like you said I think the big I think the biggest thing that I'm noticing from this you know this year's Ravens as opposed to last year's Ravens they're not finishing and that's on defense you know you know that's on defense and especially on offense you know last year for, you know we was real big about uh, finishing on the first drive of the game, we were scoring what well, we can say nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten. Uh, I don't remember the exact stat, but it was, I mean, it was way, way above 60, 70 percent on scoring on the first drive of the game, getting ahead in the game, not, you know, once again, finishing and not, you know, the defense finishing and keeping, keeping that lead and that, that it's in tandem with the offense too, finishing and keeping that lead, um, you know, in terms of that, but. I, you know, and then other other places are not finishing, not finishing, you know, in terms of like, like we said, defensively, you know, defensively, if we do have to come back from behind, the the defense always needs that one extra stop and they can't ever get it. For, for whatever reason, as great as the defense is, and I call my top five defense all the time, but as great as the defense is, when we need them the most, like the play action we saw, you know, uh, a couple of times in this game when Marcus Peters just couldn't find you know, where to go. I think I, I personally, my thoughts on Marcus Peters, I love him. I think he plays well. I think he fits in well. But I think if Marcus Peters is going to play the way Marcus Peters plays, he has to have help over the top a lot. And that, I think that can handcuff you a, a little bit, too, because we like to blitz. So but I think you got to have help with him over the top or he's going to get beat because, yes, he can he can play a little aggressive style and, and read the quarterback and stuff like that. I think that's great. That's where a lot of his picks come from. But at the same time, Somebody's got to be over the top knowing, hey, Marcus is aggressive. He might try to play this. It's the same thing. What, what was that that play? I, I know the play that Claypool was one that felt like it was on Marcus, you know, against against the Steelers. And then, of course, you know, today with Corey Davis, it was another one. I think it was one with A.J. Brown. But, I mean, it's just right now it's just it's really just lack of uh, – Lack of uh, lack of execution, you know, lack of execution, lack of discipline. Shout out to Eddie for, for coming by, uh, saying I'm salty right now. I'm, I'm not being salty. I'm being real. I'm being straight up. Um, but yeah, l- lack of execution, l- lack of uh, 
lack of, lack of discipline. That, that's that's where I'm frustrated, you know, because the thing about discipline is we going to need it, right? We're going to need it. And, that, and I think in a way that comes back to coaching, I talk about this all the time uh, with, with the Sixers who aren't as much of a, of a young team anymore now, but like, there comes a point where you got to stop playing like a young team. You can't be young forever. You know, uh, once you get two, three, four seasons in, you can't see, keep saying, we can't keep using the excuse, oh, you know, they just a young team. They, they'll figure it out. No, nah, after a while, you got to figure it out quicker than that. You know, you got to figure it out quicker than just, oh, you know, we just a young team. And sometimes I feel like the Ravens finish like that. You know, last year, it was like the perfect storm. You know, they was finishing everything, finishing first drives, finishing drives in the red zone. The defense was finishing, you know, except for a couple of games. They were doing their thing. But then this year, it's a little bit different. That, you know, than those same areas I just talked about, not finishing. But, um, I mean, kind of things that, for me in this game, this is a tough one, a tough loss. But I think at the same time, there were some positives to, to, to come out of the game. J.K. played well. I think J.K. is a freaking stud. Um, he, he outplayed both of the other running backs. Mark couldn't really do anything today. Um, and Gus didn't really do much today. So J.K. was kind of by himself, of course, with Lamar. Um, so, I mean, that, that was a positive. Dez got involved. It's like they tried to get him involved in some physical uh, ways, you know, trying to get him some short catches and, and letting him just kind of be Dez and be physical and stiff arm some people and get hit because it's been a while since he got hit. I, I think that was good. That was nice. Um, you know, I would like to see a couple more, like, jump balls for Dez. I know Lamar is not as much of a jump ball thrower but especially in the red zone more so you know we've always been known for that little seam right with the tight end it would be nice to see Daz get get one of those you know uh or or even Anquan back in the day too you know it would be nice to see Daz get one of those you know see let, let me let me see Daz get one of those you know let him go up top and be physical put it only where he can he can get it maybe even one of those little uh Peyton Manning little back of the pylon type throws where you throw it to the back of the pylon the only person that can get it is your receiver that 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 would be nice but you know i mean seeing Dez get involved was nice proche was out there he looked good on that one catch he got um you know duvernay had the one little rookie mistake i felt like um and and you know negative wise drops you know drops again and that i mean that's always a big thing for for the ravens i think they just got to put their best receivers out there but then again i mean even some of your best receivers were dropping it i gave credit to hollywood's hands and then here comes hollywood dropping the ball uh, in, in, in some key moments, um, you know, Mark Andrews, I want to say he's a top tight end, but then he's dropping the ball at times too. Um, even that one, it was like a third, I think it was a third, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was third down and it was a little bit overthrown. I, I felt like, but you know, they always say you get your hands on it, you got to go catch it. So I felt like, you know, Mark, and, uh, Mark, and, Mark Andrews should have went up and got that ball. I think he could have went up with two hands. I think he, he tried to get too stylish a little bit with the with the one-headed cat. I mean, he's done it before, of course. I mean, you know, of course he can do it, but I think you have to try to get a little too fancy uh, with it a little bit. But I think we was, up, what, 11 in this game and then ended up – the Ravens were up 11 in this game and ended up uh, blowing that lead, which has been something that we've been doing lately too, uh, is blowing the leads. But like we said, going back to just discipline, that's, that's on both sides. You know, I, of course I've discredited the defense a little bit in this video, but at the same time, you know, when they do play well, the offense still got to execute, you know, and, and, and that's why, like, I'm not ready to just take the season, throw it up into a ball and toss it behind me, you know, and be done with it, tossing it in the trash because a lot of it's simple stuff, you know, it's, it's simple stuff, you know, defensively reading your gaps from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, not just the first through the third quarter, you know, for, for, you know, defensively, you know, at the same time, don't be afraid to run, you know, to run up the middle. Nobody, there's no DB out here tackling uh, JK. There's really not. No DB is going to tackle uh, Gus either. You know, it's going to have to be a team effort, I think. So, you know, that's one of the things too. Like cause people are like, you know, have, have people, and, and I don't want to get too much into it because I do want this to be pretty quick, but, you know, have, have, have people, uh, you know, figured out the Ravens offense. I don't think anybody's figured out the Ravens offense per se, right? Still is a number one run defense in the league, ran all over them. Um, you know, last week was a good offensive game. It's just, just didn't finish the game, you know, just didn't finish the game. You know, whatever that, you know, whatever the reason was behind not finishing the game, you didn't finish the game. Whether it was the Steelers with turnovers, whether it was last year with the bad, I mean, not last year, last week with the bad snaps and turnovers and these other, in these other games where it felt like we were figured out 
you know, look back in the Chargers game, just didn't play our game. Look back in the Titan game, just didn't play our game. Look back in the Chiefs game, just didn't play our game, right? And on top of that, turnovers too. So it's like, I think some, you know, that's why I'm not ready to, you know, throw away the season at six and four. It's like six and four is still a good record. Yes, everybody has a good record right now. But I think losses will start to stack as, I mean, ironically enough, as we're seeing with Baltimore right now. I think losses will start to stack, and we can't kind of are in a tough part of our schedule. Bill Belichick, of course, is the best coach in the league. The Titans are, are a better team than I think anybody's going to give them credit for. I mean, of course, they got the best running back in the league. The Steelers are, of course, undefeated, uh, and they will be next week too. So, we, I mean, we're in the toughest part of, of the schedule right now. So, I mean, I mean, but I think, you know, Next week is important. Thursday night is important with the Steelers. Thanksgiving, that's an important game. It's it's almost a must-win game. I don't think the season's over if we don't win it, but it's a must-win game because uh, I think other teams will start to stack losses. Um, but nonetheless, um, like I said, not not truly. I don't know if I finished that point. Not truly ready to give up on the season yet, and not just because I think teams are going to stack losses, but I think. When you look at the actual game, it's like if the it's bounces, it literally just bounces. Uh, if the snap bounces to Lamar instead of or to Mark Ingram instead of uh, on the ground, fifteen yards down the field, you know that's a different play, right? If Willie Sneed can get that catch at the very end of the game with the Steelers, you know that's a win, right? Um, in this game, you know. If anybody could get open on that last play when Lamar had to end up throwing it away and that's taking the field goal, you know, boom, there you go. Like, it's just it's just different stuff, you know, and I, and I think, like, it's not stuff that's hard to correct. You know, it's not stuff that's hard to correct. A lot of it's discipline, and even on the defensive end, you know, staying, staying in your lane, staying where you need to be. You know, if you're going to commit to the run, commit to it, but make sure that you got help over the top. If you're going to – Marcus Peters, if you're going to commit to that slant route, don't get beat by a slant and go, you know, so, you know, same thing, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, I think, I think, I think the issues are easily correctable. Um, and of course we'll talk more about it during our uh, week 12 predictions. Uh, that'll give me a chance to unwind a little bit, figure out what really went wrong. Of course, you know, outside of our uh, quick reactions here. That'll give me a chance to uh, unwind a little bit and, you know, really look look back into it. Because, I, I, you know, I, I've looked into to some things this week. And, you know, even even in the game, that felt like it was probably the worst game of the season, which was the Chiefs game. It still was a seven-point game at one point. And I ain't talking about when it was 7-0. Uh, it was still a seven-point game uh, close to the end. And then the Chiefs ended up scoring. And, and there you go. But, you know, discipline, man, that, that's the biggest thing. Like, look at what makes you great. Look at what makes you not great. and and Find, you know, find more of what makes you great than not great and go execute it. It seems easy and it's not necessarily as easy as it sounds. But at the same time, it's like a lot of it is just carelessness, you know, penalties, you know, uh, even even in this game. Another thing I was thinking about penalties, um, too, you know, some of the little careless, the little bonehead penalties, you know, the the center snapping the ball before Des Bryant can get set on a play that probably would have been a touchdown to Hollywood Brown. That uh, that would have won the game, you know. That that's that that's one, you know. Uh, there was another another one that was on a on a fourth and short. That was a was a false start or something like that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that that would have been a you know an easier conversion. I was, no, I think that was a third and short. That's right. Uh, Mark Andrews jumped on on that one on on the third and short. It would have been a QB sneak. I don't know if he got it. I felt like he got it, but I wasn't sure. But still, like would have been a QB sneak or a run up the middle or whatever, like. Easy, you know, easy play to get a first down. So stuff like that, man. It's this, it's the little, the little careless stuff, the little careless stuff that uh, you know comes down to coaching. You know, I think, I, I think some of that careless stuff, man, just, just comes down, comes down to coaching. I don't think this was a terribly called game by Greg Roman. Um, and hopefully we can get Dad's involved a little bit more. I, I felt like things felt a little bit more open though when Dez was on the field. You know, I mean. We talked about it in the, in the uh, week 11 preview, like putting Dez on the field just gives you something extra. You know, it gives you something extra. 
and Des Bryant is still Des Bryant. I don't care if he's been out of the league for two years. I mean, it's the same thing with Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice has been retired for a good bit, but you put him out on the field, I got, I still got to respect him because he's Jerry Rice until proven otherwise. You know, if he proves me otherwise, then okay, cool, you know. But, I mean, Des, I think Des was targeted four or five times. He dropped one ball that I don't even think was a drop. I really have to go back and see that. I, I hope that I can find it on Twitter somewhere. But, yeah, I mean, uh, overall, I mean, it's just putting it together, man. I mean, they they allowed 11 points in the fourth quarter and scored three, in the, in, you know, in the fourth. You know, the second and third quarter was good. Like the first, the first quarter and the fourth quarter were practically identical for for Tennessee. Almost, you know, Tennessee played well the first quarter. They played well the fourth quarter, and that, and, and of course overtime, and that's what made the difference. You know, I mean, you look at it. Baltimore scored three points in the fourth, and of course seven and eleven in the second and third, which which was which you know of course is better. You know, that's eighteen points. You know, that's a that's a three possession. You know, that's three possessions right there where you where you at least scored, you know, over twenty two quarters. So that's pretty good. Especially with a with the way the Titans hold the football. But I mean, I don't know. Just I feel I feel like, you know, they, they gotta they gotta just start finishing. And and I mean I, I, like I said, I'm not ready to throw the whole season away because it's really just a bounce here and a bounce there that that could that can make the difference in, in some of these losses being wins. Um real quick about the, you know, real quick about the, the offense one, la- one last time. Have people really figured out the offense? No. No way. Um, no way to me because, you know, you can say, oh, you know, you put, put speed out there, right? You know, that, that's, that's been the whole thing. You know, put, put speed out there and, you know, you'll be able to stop the Lamar Jackson on the outside. But can, can all those DBs really stop JK and Gus and even Mark, Mark Ingram? If you do, I mean, and I think some of the stuff, but Mark maybe should just be simplified, you know. Just you know, he, he of course he's getting older, but he's coming off injury too. If you're gonna use Mark, you I mean, don't be afraid to run a little single back, a little eye form or something, and really go power with Mark Ingram and let him just use what really you don't lose, which is that strength. You really don't lose that strength like that. You might lose some speed, but you ain't gonna lose that strength. So I, th- I think that's another thing that the uh, Ravens should definitely do uh, coming up in these next couple of weeks. I, I'm sure I'm sure they'll figure it out. They always tend to um, in these scenarios. I mean, last year was the same thing. Lost two in a row, you know, one twelve straight. I think this could be another little late season run uh, where you just kind of got to have the ball bounce your way. And, and this year it ain't really been bouncing their way. Last thing, just overall NFL type thing, little, little, uh, little something I want to say to the NBA is be careful. Um, and what I mean by that is is be careful because – We've seen this this COVID season uh, for the NFL has been horrible for the players. Um, and uh, I mean, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the uh, Week 12 preview. But the COVID season has been horrible for the players. Um, this is my last point, I promise, because I didn't want to make this video too long. But it has turned out a little bit long. But um, the COVID season has been horrible for the players. Be careful, NBA. You're going to run this short off season, and you're going to get yourself in trouble because – the NFL is always like, you know, you know, you, you try to rush the season to, to get the, you know, to make sure you get your money in when, I mean, you got plenty of time, like it'll be fine. Like I, I, I've never understood that in the NFL. I think did the same thing with the off season. They rushed it. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't let these guys get conditioned like they should be. And that's why, that's why Dak's down. That's why Saquon's down. You know, that's why a lot of these players are down. That's why Nick Bowles down. That's why Orlando Brown's down because they're not, ready for this season yes injuries happen in football that's a true statement i'm sure somebody will say it injuries do happen in football and we've seen we've seen this before and we have but have we ever seen it at this level have we seen this many bad terrible and horrible injuries that shortening careers for the money makers that you claim nfl that you claim you want to see on the field every week have we really seen it this bad no we haven't but nonetheless we'll talk more about that of course on the week 12 predictions um last point i promise uh if you haven't already be sure to um of course like things to class wrestling podcast on facebook subscribe on youtube and if you want to listen uh anchor is the way to go or spotify or apple Podcasts. of course you can google uh, google us and find us at any of the various platforms that you may enjoy yourself but nonetheless uh quick reactions here um quick re- <laughs> Frustrated, uh, quick reactions here, uh, for the Ravens Titans game. 
Titans end up getting the win. But I don't think the Ravens are done yet. I really don't. I really don't think the Ravens are done quite yet. I'm not ready to call it yet. I'm not ready to throw in the towel. I don't have a towel on me. But I'm not ready to throw it in yet, okay? I'm not ready to throw it in yet. We'll see you guys, whatever the next video may be. Maybe a Survivor Series review, possibly for my wrestling fans. Nonetheless, see you guys on the next one. Peace.